Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts, and today I have a super fun kind of winter or Christmas card to share with you. I apologize in advance, it's been a few days since I've posted a video. I've got a sick kiddo at home and things have gotten delayed, and also the camera broke, so it's just been one of those weeks. I did post this card yesterday up on my blog and on Butterfly Reflections Inc.'s blog, but I will go back and amend those posts to include a link to this video. So I'm sorry I'm a day late with this video. This is the card we're going to be working on today, and I absolutely adore this stamp set. Um, I did create, as you can see, a fun little winter village for my little Yeti to live, <laughs> as well as the little dog and the little penguin. I can, as you can see here, I have a fun distressed <clears throat> inked background here with some glimmer spray at the top. And then we have this little sign that says Yeti or not, it's Christmas time again at the bottom. So we're going to go through step by step how I put this card together. Um, scene building cards, if you've been a, a viewer of my channel for any time, you probably know that scene building cards are my favorite kind of cards to make. And they can seem intimidating, but they really are so easy. If you have a plan and a couple basic dies, you can make any type of scene card very quickly. So let's go ahead and show you how I did this card. The stamp set that I'm using today is this one from Neat and Tangled. It's called Get Yeti, and it is so cute. You can see there's some images I didn't even get a chance to use. Little mountains, a little bird, a little snowman, some snowflakes. Such a cute, cute uh, stamp set. Love it. A couple other things that I used. I used the Stitched Hillside Borders die from Lawn Fawn. This is a perfect basic die set for scene building. You get four different hillsides and I only used one on this card here at the bottom and again I'll show you all of that as we put this card together. But this is a great basic die set to purchase if you want to start scene building on your cards. It is so easy to use and it really helps that creativity churn when you're trying to figure out how to put a little scene card together. <clears throat> the other die set that I use is the Stitch Mountain Borders die from Lawn Fawn and these are perfect for creating winter or holiday scene cards and it's also a great basic. You don't have to however be confined to just winter with this stamps with this die set rather. You can do green mountains with you know extra with brighter green hilltops. You can do all kinds of brown mountains all kinds so don't think that you're just limited to winter if you buy this die set. But these are two great staple die sets to have in your stash um, for scene building. All right, so the first thing that I did in making this card is I created the background. So let's do that first. To do that, I only used two different colors of Distress Oxide inks. I have here, because whenever I do scene building and I have rather large images, I like to have the scene take up the entirety of an A2 size card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I went ahead and cut to my cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half. This happens to be <clears throat> Um, Canson XL watercolor paper. I really prefer working on that with my Distress Oxide inks. I have found uh, just over many, many months of experimenting, but you can also use any type of smooth cardstock such as Bristol Smooth. Even Nina Heavyweight cardstock will work great with the Distress Oxide inks, um, but my personal preference is the watercolor. So I'm using Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink as well as Faded Jeans, and I am just going to create a really quick background. I'm going to turn, pretend this is the bottom of the, pay, of, the, of the scene here. I'm going to turn it this way because it's a little bit easier to blend. And remember, you're going to have your scenes, your mountains, etc., down here. So you don't need to ink up the entire thing. I'm just going to start about here. And I'm going to get salty ocean all over this, the background here. So I'm just kind of starting off the paper just slightly and then coming in. I'm really not worried about what this looks like right now. I am just getting the ink on the paper. I'm going to turn it back this way now just to kind of blend up here. And again, I'm really not worried about the bottom because it's all going to be covered up by my, my little seam. Okay, so we've got all of that salty ocean covering the entirety of the panel. Now we're going to dip into our faded jeans and we're just going to darken the edges. And again, this is going to look like a mess right now because I'm not really worried about the blending. I'm just worried about getting the ink on the cardstock. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in now 
and just kind of go around the edges, so the top and the two sides. And if I had the bottom, you know, that wasn't going to be covered, I'd do the bottom too. But since that bottom is going to be covered by our mountains and our hillside, I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now we've got this darker color with, with the highlight in the middle. So we're done with our faded jeans. I'm going to come back in now with the salty ocean and really blend this out so it all looks smoothless. So there's a smoothless transition between the dark color and the light. So all I do is I just have a very light hand and I just come in and I blend the salty ocean with that faded jeans just to get a really nice transition from the darker color to the lighter color. I'm just kind of wanting a nice wintry blue sky. That's all I'm looking for here. And this is looking really good. It's a little deceiving because the bottom isn't done, but just bear with me for a moment. That's just saving me a little bit of time here and ink as well. Um, but there we go. So there is what it's gonna look like. So what we're going to do now is just put these little blending pad foams away for just a moment and then we're going to spritz this with a little bit of water from our distress sprayer. I'm using my Tim Holtz distress sprayer here to do this and we're just going to lightly spritz this with just a little tiny bit of water and it's going to create, <clears throat> as you know if you've watched me for any length of time, I really like how the distress inks and the distress oxide inks react to water and it just makes this fun kind of distress look but it can also kind of look if you do a fine mist spray like I just did um, it also creates this kind of fun um, you could almost have like a snowflake kind of look as well so we're going to set this aside for just a moment to dry but this is kind of what it's going to look like as a final step by the way if you want to do this this is completely optional in my finished card I did some um, glimmer spray at the top just to give it some extra shine so let me just show that to you quickly here <clears throat> and again this is completely 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 optional you do not have to do this step at all if you do not want to i just thought it kind of added that extra little bit so this is just some glimmer spray for it happens to be from hero arts you can use whatever you have in your stash now I'm going to open this paper up because this spray tends to kind of travel and I don't want it to get all over my workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shake it up really well and then just give it a little bit of a spray at the top. There we go. Just I gave it two sprays. The first two sprays I wasn't pointing the nozzle cor correctly, pardon me for that. And then I'm just going to blot it dry just a little bit here. <clears throat> And then I will pull this up to the camera so you can see, look at that. Now it's still a little wet, but look at that beautiful shimmer that you get. And when it dries, it's gonna be even prettier. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside to dry. And now I'm going to show you how I do, or how I did rather, the little scene building. So what I did is I knew I kind of wanted a mountain scene. So I pulled out my dies that we went through at the beginning of the video. I knew I wanted the tall mountains here. I also, this set comes with two different ranges of mountains. So I thought, well, how cute would it be to kind of line up the small mountain range at the base of the larger mountains? And then I thought, we'll need something for the little Yeti and his little pals to sit on. So what if I did kind of a little bit of, whoops, that's not the right one, it's this one. A little bit of a kind of a hillside with a little rolling hillside at the bottom. And that's how I came up with this little layout. So I just kind of lay my dies out and came up with that. Then what I did is I decided to use some Bristol Smooth cardstock for this part. And I cut out two pieces of Bristol Smooth cardstock, same size as the finished card. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And on my first piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock, I laid out my mountains. So I put this one here and this one here, kind of used some um, low tack tape, some post-it note tape to tape them down. I ran them through my Big Shot, all right? And then this is what you get. Here's the tall mountain range. This saves you paper doing it this way, so um, you can get two different cuts out of one piece of paper, which I really like to do. I like to conserve my paper as much as I can. So this is going to sit like this on your finished card, just like that. Then on my second piece of cardstock, I have my little mountain hillside. 
<clears throat> which I lay out like so. Use that same nonstick paper again to, or not, I'm sorry, low tack tape rather, to tape it down. And I'm left with this. So this is how my little scene is going to look. Just like this. And that, it's that easy. That's how I laid it out and that's how I cut it and kind of figured it out and that's it. That is how easy it is. So like I said at the beginning of the video, with some very basic dies, you are able to create a really cute scene if you just have some basics. The price point on these dies is very good as well for what you get. It's so awesome to be able to get two different mountain ranges in one little border die set. You also in this set, and I didn't cut these out for the purposes of the video, but you get this little trio here of mountain tops. Which again, you could do anyway for whatever season your scene is representing. But for mine, as you can see on the finished card here, I used gl white glimmer paper to represent snow. So I just cut them out and then just placed them here at the tops of the mountains. And they're different sizes because the, the mountain tops are different sizes. So you get three different sizes, which you can vary as you play around with your scene. All right, so the, the next step that I did then is I didn't want these to be stark white. I wanted them to have a little tiny bit of color. So what I did is I grabbed some Distress Ink in Tumbled Glass, which is a very, very, very light blue. And I'm just going to very, very lightly ink the tippy tops of my hillside and my mountains. So let's do that very quickly here. Just going to, with the lightest touch, I'm going to start off the paper here and just come in and get just the lightest little touch hint of blue at the tippy top of the hillsides and the mountains. This is just going to bring some shading and a little bit of color to the scene that we're building. And it might be difficult for this to show up on camera, but on the finished card and on the pictures on the blog, you will be able to see um, this hint of blue. And I think it really does make a difference. It takes barely any time at all to do. And I think that the outcome is well worth it. Because again, you don't want everything to look stark white. We take such care when we're coloring our images to you know, add that shading and make sure that we're, we're thinking about our light source and where the shading and the light spots on our images are going to be. So we should do that when we're doing our scene building as well. I'm not really worrying about it from an artistic point of view, really. I'm just wanting to put a little bit of color down here so we get a little bit of that idea that we have some shading going on. So that simple, that only took a few seconds there to do that, and that quickly we have just a little bit of color added to our scene. So let me now, whoops, I'm throwing Distress Ink all around here. Sorry about that, guys. It is one of those mornings. All right. So let me bring over now the finished panel that we did. And it is still a little tiny bit wet. And let me dab it just a little bit. There we go. All right. So here you have that beautiful finished scene that we did. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how you would put this together. So here's our mountain tops. Here's the smaller mountains that are going to go about there. And then here is that beautiful hillside. And what you would do is you would tape all of this down and then simply turn it over and trim off the excess on the bottom. And that's how I built this beautiful scene that you see on the finished card. Ta-da, that easy, guys. It really is super easy to do that and super fun. If someone were to receive this card, they would probably think you spent hours and hours and hours on it, but you didn't. You didn't, and it's so easy to do, and, the re and it's fun to do, and the result is really nice. So I thought to finish up this video today, I would quickly show you how I went about um, coloring a few of the main images from the card. So what I'm going to do is color the little Yeti, the puppy, and the penguin. So for the Yeti, he is super simple. I used gray and light gray on the main parts of the Yeti. Again, I always start with my darkest color first, so I'm coming in with the gray. I have my light source coming in from the right, so the far left of him is certainly going to be darkest. So I'm just putting a little hint of the gray down because it is a pretty dark gray. So I'm just putting it where there's going to be certainly quite a bit of shadow. And then we're gonna come in with our light gray in just a moment and blend this out. All right, now it's time for the light gray. And the light gray, I'm going to put in more places than I did the dark gray. 
because again, I didn't want that dark gray overpowering the image, so I didn't put it everywhere. But we kind of want the light gray in a few other places as well. So I'm coming in under his chin, over here, down here by his little foot. The drawings really help, the illustrations of the stamps really kind of help indicate where there's going to be shadows. So kind of just let the images speak to you as well when you're trying to determine where light source and such should be. All right, so there we go. Now we're gonna take our water brush and I use this detailer water brush. I like it the best. I've used a few others and this one is my favorite because it really lets me get into these small spaces as well as large spaces. It's kind of the perfect in-between brush. And all I'm doing now is, and forgive me for turning the image around, it just kind of helps a little bit here. Um, but I am going to use this water to really blend this out. We don't want to see lines in our coloring. We just kind of want a smooth transition from the shaded areas to the lightest areas. I'm going to give my water brush a little bit of a squeeze here so this water really flows. I find that I have to do that sometimes um, when the image is kind of large like this. The water will kind of run out at the tip of the brush and so you need to kind of give it a little squeeze, get that water flowing. Now you could also do this with just a paintbrush and um, a cup of water if you don't have a water brush. That will work just fine as well. You just need water to move these markers around. Now I have gone out of the lines over here on the left side of the image and I will show you how to fix that in just a moment. That is kind of a downside to squeezing that water brush in the middle of coloring. Um, it, it can kind of get away from you a little bit sometimes, but luckily these zigs are so forgiving. Here's how you fix this if you find that you have gone out of the lines. You just clean off the, the tip of your water brush, which just means you scribble it off onto a paper towel or scratch paper. So now I have a clean tip to my water brush and I am pushing that ink that has gone out of the lines away. It basically erases it. Sometimes you have to go at it a few times, but it works. Just a little bit of patience and a clean water brush, continue cleaning it off and dab with a paper towel, and eventually this will go away completely. But as you can see, it's basically gone now. I'm gonna do the same thing over here in the middle between his legs as well, where I also went out of the lines. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup, and as you can see, I have a beautiful, cute little colored Yeti here. I haven't done the inside of his face yet, so we'll get there in just a moment. I'm just kind of cleaning up here just a little bit with a few places that I went out of the lines. All right, there we go. Okay, so for his face, I just wanted some light gray, so I'm using light gray. Um, I'm just kind of focusing it on the left side of his face. And then we'll just blend this out as well. And so there you go. Now the Yeti is meant to kind of be white, but you don't want him just to appear stark white on your paper, on your, on your project. So that's why I use the light gray. I've done other Yeti cards before and I've used light blue. Light blue or gray are perfect for um, getting that, that look that you're looking, that you're going for when you want something white, but you still want to show shading. For the inside of his ears, I'm going to use light pink as well as for his nose. And I'm just gonna blend, whoops, I'm just gonna blend this light pink out. And there we go. All right, so that's a very quick coloring of the little Yeti. Let's move on to the puppy. For the puppy, I am going to use some dark brown, brown, and light brown. So I'm putting some dark brown here. He's gonna be kind of multicolored, as you'll see as we go along here. So I'm putting some dark brown and brown on his little ears. I think this puppy is absolutely adorable. I just can't get enough of this puppy. I'm probably gonna have to do a card with just the puppy at some point, because he's just too cute. All right, so there we go. There's the dark brown and brown. I'm going to next do brown and light brown for his fur, but I'm gonna leave these little patches alone because I'm gonna do those little patches in a different color. The same dark color that I did his ears, I'm gonna do those little patches. Now I'm coming in with a light brown here. And then we'll just blend this out. So as you can see, his fur is going to be a lighter color than his little ears and the patches. I just thought that that would be really cute to have them being different colors. One of the lines again, easy peasy fix. 
love that about the Zix. I don't have to restart or dis discard my project if I go out of the lines or make a mistake. You know, sometimes I make so many cards, sometimes I am going, you know, fast trying to get something done and, you know, I'm not the neatest colorer all the time. So sometimes things will get away from me and I'll go out of the lines. Or when you're working with watercolor markers like these, just, you know, the watercolor can be, <laughs> it can be very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't always do what you want it to do. It's not always planned. It's kind of wild and does its own thing. Um, whenever you're doing any kind of painting with watercolors, that is kind of what can happen. And so that is why I love working with the Zigs because they are so forgiving and you can just go right back in and fix it. So now I'm going to come up here and in this little patch, I'm going to put some dark brown and some brown, just like I did his ears. So his little patches will be dark, just like the ears. Cute. Super, super cute. I'm going to do this little patch as well, dark brown over here and over here. Come in with just the tiniest little bit of brown. And then we will blend these out. There we go. And there's our cute little puppy for his antlers. I'm just going to do some dark brown and just kind of randomly place that dark brown kind of at the base of the antlers where it would be the darkest, you know, kind of where the antlers stretch out. And I'm just going to kind of blend that dark color out. And if I need to add more as we go, I can, but this should get me through. Sometimes when things are this thin and, uh, you know, skinny, you don't get the best shading, but you get some for sure. I definitely, it might not show up on camera, but there's definitely some variation in color there on those um, antlers. I couldn't find the word. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So now let's move down to our little penguin. He's obviously the outside of him, the outside of his tummy area is what I'm trying to say is going to be black. So I'm going to come in and just put some shading where it's going to be black. Black, the black zig marker goes a long way. You really don't need a whole lot of it. Um, as you saw, I just put very little down because it's one of those where it reacts with the water and boom, um, it's just flowing. So you don't want too much or else you, you won't get any shading. It's just all going to be black if that makes sense. So too much marker is never a good thing if you want to see that shading. Now, if you put too much marker on, you can always go back and fix it. You don't have to discard your image. You can just go back and color it again a little darker in the shadows and, you know, lighten it up that way. So it is possible to fix it. But if you kind of play with these, you, you'll know ahead of time, you know, which markers. Oh, I need to be extra light on this marker. And black is one of those. I'm going to do a little light gray now in the middle. Just again, that appearance of white. but still wanting to see some sh shading. So I just put some light gray down and we're just blending that out into the white space with our water brush. There we go. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of orange and I'm gonna put some orange down here at his little feet and on his beak. And we'll just blend that out with our water brush. And then um, let's see, finally we want to do the little dog scarf. I waited on the scarf just so the doggy could dry a little bit. Because again, sometimes I've said in other videos, these, if they are still a little bit wet, they'll react to each other and you might get some bleeding uh, of the colors into another area, which you don't want. Again, they're forgiving, you can fix it. But I have found if I can remember, even as long as I've been doing this, I'll forget sometimes. But if I can remember to just kind of wait a few seconds, I el eliminate that problem and then I don't have to go back and fix it. There we go. And I use Peacock Blue for his little scarf there. All right. So that is super, super fast coloring. The only other thing I would do is I would take my black gel pen, go in and darken up the little eyes and the nose of the puppy, the little eyes of the penguin, the eyes of the little Yeti. And then I would take my white gel pen and put his teeth in just to lighten those up to make them really white. And there you have it, guys. That is how quick and easy it is to work with these zig markers. It is so easy and fun to do. And you actually have a, the result is a beautiful watercolor little scene. So here is the finished card.
once one more time. I hope that you love this card. You'll give some scene building and some watercoloring a try. I also added to this scene, by the way, the little log cabin and the little Yeti or not sign, but I didn't color those for today because this video is already really long and I'm so sorry, but I did want to kind of walk you through how I put this fun little card together because I think these scene cards can be um, intimidating, but I think once you break it down, you really can see how easy it is. Now, all of the products that I use to create this card today are available over at Butterfly Reflections. I will link you to that in the description box below of this video, and I will also link you to my blog in the description box of this video, which will have a complete product list, links, and everything you might need if you are interested. One final thing, I did go over the belly of the penguin, the Yeti, and the scarf of the puppy with lots of Wink of Stella glitter pen, but it's not going to show up today with the lighting on my camera. It will show up in the pictures on the blog. So thank you so much, guys, for crafting with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.